Hi everyone, in this video we'll see how you can create this Google Gemini effect with Tailwind CSS and Framer Motion which is now motion.dev and which is what we'll be using in this video. Starting this video I'll be using motion.dev's motion instead of Framer Motion because now it's a standalone project and in this video we'll learn about scroll animations in Framer Motion and how you can trigger path lengths of SVGs to animate these sorts of beams which you see onto the website. So let's have a look at the effect that we're going to try to recreate. So once the user scrolls onto the page you see the beams animate from left to right and once the scroll reaches the end it kind of stops so once you go back or move forward the beams kind of animate so let's see how you can do that same effect with framer motion and you learn how path lengths work with framer motion in this video so let's get right into our code editor i have a vanilla next.js project setup and what i'll try to do is i'll try to install framer motion you see i'm using next.js which is latest which is next.js 15 and react 19 so i'll also show you how you can use framer motion with react or latest react versions what i'm going to do is I'm going to open the frame of motion docs, which is this, and I'm going to do this and pm install. So the latest alpha version has to be installed because the frame of motion 11 is not yet compatible with React 19 and XJS 15. A lot of people are facing issues with ACRD as well for the for the same project. And let's see how you can install it. So now we have frame of motion installed. Easy peasy. I'll also go ahead and add utilities, which is the CN class names so that we can easily merge two classes together in React. I'll also do this CLSX and Tailwind merge. All right, and I'll go ahead and create a folder called let's do it here lib utils. I'll go ahead and copy this, put it here. I see now if I run the dev server, you will see it's not working. Nice. Okay, I use node, I'll have to use node.js 20 for it to work, and it works. For now, I'll remove the boilerplate code from here. I'll quickly close the terminal so that you can see it better. I'll remove this, I'll remove the footer. I'll remove this div. I'll just have a div which is hello world. And let's see if that works. Tailwind is already there, so it works out of the box. I also want to have a flex box. Flex item center justify center. Cool. Forget. Doesn't have a full screen yet. And since we need a scroll onto the website, we need to be able to scroll for the animation to take place. I'm going to give it a height of 400 viewport height so that the text is at least scrollable. So now if you see, if I scroll, you see hello world right here. Also give it a width full so that it takes up the entire space. So now you see this hello world right here and the area is scrollable. Awesome. So now what I'll do is I'll try to copy the Gemini lines which you see on the Gemini website. So whatever lines that you see are exported from Figma. So that will be an SVG, which I'm going to copy in just a minute. And that SVG's paths is what we are going to animate in this video. So let me quickly find it and paste it over here for you to see. So now here I've pasted the SVG from the Gemini animation or the Gemini illustration which is there. So you see whatever you see right here is what you see on the Gemini website. So this is directly exported from Figma. I did not create it. I took it from the internet. And you see we have got the paths over here. Now since we have the paths, we can animate these paths as well. So what I want to essentially do is, so since we have this scroll right here, I want to remove the flex item center so that it comes onto the top or even justify center. Okay, I have to remove justify center first. Cool. Fresh, why is it not centering? Okay, it is here. W full. Okay, it is now here. I'll just zoom in it a bit. So now it is at the very top. What I also want to do is once the user scrolls this, I want the illustration or the lines to stick at the top. So I'll probably use a sticky class so that the illustration stays at the top. Sticky top zero top, let's say 80. Let's see if that works. It doesn't. I think the container needs to be relative. Strange. Okay, it works. So sticky top, I'll probably have 40. I'll remove this div on top. Even zero would work or 20 would work. So yeah, once I scroll this, it sticks at the top or at the bottom. I'm zoomed in. So it looks like it's at the bottom, but it's at the top. I'll probably have it zero, but it's better aligned. So yeah, now once the user scrolls, the animation sticks there. Now what I want to do is I want to animate these path lines along with it. So when the user scrolls, the lines sort of form. So what I would use for that is a hook from frame of motion called you scroll. What you scroll does is it gives you helpful utilities for you to track where the user is at the position. For example, if I'm using scroll Y progress, for example, I'll just go ahead and import it by progress equal to you scroll. Okay. And it takes to parameters also you scroll target target is the target element that you want to track and it takes 
offset also wherein it tells you how the element and the viewport intersect so for example if i say if i have a const ref is equal to use ref and i ref it to this mm. okay it is passed in here i'll probably ref it to i don't know even want it here i want it probably here target would be ref offset would be start start and start this start start and start means I want the scroll Y to track the progress once this element's start intersects with the top of the document or the viewport. So that is when the animation starts and that is exactly when the animation ends also. So this is what start, start and start means. So in this case, I'll also use another hook from Framer Motion, which is use motion value event, which I can use this event to log the progress, which is there. So if you see scroll Y progress change latest, it will tell me what is the latest. And why is it crying? Okay, it has to be SVG, uh, SVG element. I probably do is um, get rid of this, have this HTML div element ref ref pool. Let's see if it is still there. It is still there. Awesome. Now I'll just console log and see what the progress is. Uh, get bounding client rec. So you see, you are able to see the progress. So it goes from zero to one, zero to one. So that means in this 400 viewport height that you have, how far down you are into the document is what this scroll by progress is going to give you. And we can use this scroll by progress eventually to animate our path lengths, which are these. So what I'm right now going to do is I'm going to take the first path, convert it to a motion path and motion we import from frame a motion. Now, in order to transform this scroll by progress, so for example, once the user is halfway there, I want this line to go from zero to completely that. In order to do it, I'll need to use another hook from Frame of Motion, which is called use transform. So this will be called const path length, and I'll call it first is equal to use transform, and I'll use scroll by progress, which is the progress, and I'll say when it is going from zero to zero point four, I want the path length to go from zero to one. Cool. So what I want to say is path length first is use transform scroll by progress from zero to zero point four. I want the path length to go from zero to one. So this essentially would mean if I say initial path length would be zero and animate or style. Let's say I don't even want to animate path length would be path length first. So once the user scrolls, right, and I also want to have a transform, little transform going on right here. And I also want to have a transition going on, which will be duration zero, ease would be linear. So let's see how this comes out to be. So once I scroll, there is nothing. Once I do not scroll, there is nothing. Once I start scrolling, you see the bottom one, there is this cute little, little line. It animates and it animates and animates, animates and goes off. So this is how you animate a path length. Awesome. This is one. I'm going to do it similarly for the rest of the path lengths. So I'm going to do const path length second is equal to I'll let autocomplete do the trick. Third, const path length fourth and path length fifth. Now it is saying from 0 0.8 to 1. That means it will start later on, but I don't want that. I want to start it from 0 0.4 only. So let's see how the results comes out to be. So the path length first is a similar thing I'm going to do for the rest of the paths. Motion dot path, motion dot path and motion dot path. Awesome. I'll have the same inside path length second. Same, but we're going to have path length third and transition. What I can probably do is const transition duration zero is going to be linear. Then we'll paste this transition here. Transition, transition, transition. I'm going to have initial path length zero, style path length fourth, and initial path length zero, style path length fifth. So now let's see out. Now you see everything is empty, right? Once you start scrolling, you'll see all the lines animate. But now all the lines are not at all animating because we started. A little late so we can modify these path lengths according to our needs whenever we want to display them for example i do not want it to show from 0 0.4 to 0 0.8 i want to show 0 to 0 0.4 similar to this 0 to 0 0.4 0 0 0.4 0 0 0.4 now you'll see everything starts from zero and once you start animating all the lines comes at the same time they animate animate and they move out so that is what use transform does it sort of animates. So what I also want to do is I do not want to start everything at once. I rather want to have this one visible a bit than this, than this, than this, than this. So it is sort of like diagonally lined. So what I can do here is I can do maybe I took a second and figured out which values work best. So these were the ones which made out to made made a lot of sense. So yeah, you see the first one, second, third, fourth. 
and once you start it it animates beautifully awesome so this is how you animate with frame on motions path length property and use transform and use scroll there is one other thing with this svg that we need to add is the gaussian blur that you see here at the back you see it's a little faded right so what we can do is we can paste the exact same svg and add a filter of gaussian blur which is sort of blurred background which you see and it'll look a bit better and you'll see the lines are animating on top of it what you can do is essentially replicate the SVG that we have here or essentially the parts of the SVG that we have here so what I'll do is I'll just copy this and I'll say parts Gaussian blur part I do not want these motion parts on the these ones and I also don't want these path lengths here one two three four now you see I don't want this entirely to be visible I want it to be blurred out so what I can do here is I can add a little Gaussian blur and how you add gradients or filters in SVGs you have these def tags and you have a filter on top of it which is ID ID I'm going to give it mm, let's say blur me cool and I'll have an FE Gaussian blur in would be source graphic and standard deviation so this is the blur value sort of what you see in filter blur right this is the intensity of the blur I want it to be 5 this ID I need to mention it on all of these parts so i'll have filter url blur me correct so i'll have it here 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 onto this one and onto the last one awesome let's see how it is blurred out awesome it is blurred out at the back you see right you're able to see right you see that right you're able to see that so yeah once you see this blur also and now you start to scroll it beautifully animate that's how you do it it's that simple nothing fancy just two hooks that we used. One was you scroll. Where is it? Here is you scroll. That gives you scroll Y progress. It also gives you scroll progress, which tells you how far pixels you're down into the page from the top. And scroll Y progress, which is 0 to 1. That is essentially 0% to 100%. How far you are down the page with respect to percentages. The scroll Y progress, you can use it to transform anything. You can also have one other hook, which is you spring, which you can essentially do like this. You spring. Now, this is getting a bit complicated, but yeah, I'll, I'll import you spring. What it does is it gives a natural animation of spring. I'm going to make another video on spring animations and you can basically have damping and stiffness props onto this and I'll probably have damping 10 stiffness 12. So you'll see it is more of a springy nature animation that you'll see. You see the bottom one. I'll probably try to comment out the rest so you can see this one better. Uh, so pathless, pathless. First, I animated right. Second, third, fourth. Yeah. So now you'll probably see only one. Once I scroll, you see this damping animation, right? You see it damps a bit. It damps, damps. So it damps a bit. You could modify these values according to your needs. You can make it, let's say, fifty in damping. You can make fifty, and you can see how it performs. It is a little slow. I've gone back. It is a little slow. It is a little slow. Yeah, if I increase stiffness to 500, let's say what happens. Damn. This looks better. Yeah, this is amazing. So you could probably have it for every other path length that you see here. I'm going to uncomment this because I don't want to use it here. The linear one looks better already. In the next video, I'll probably cover you spring and other framework motion or motion tutorials. This was the video. That is how you create motion or path length animations with frame or motion gemini was one example one easy example so i could tell you better and that is how you use use transform in order to transform those scroll y progress values into usable path length values it can be anything it can be opacity also for example you want to say i want to const opacity is equal to use transform ah where did it go use transform scroll y progress 0 to 0 0.8 0 0.5 to 1 or 0 to 1 for that matter so once the scroll y progress goes from 0 to 0 0.8 you want to do something with opacity which is 0 to 1 this opacity internally you can use here so you can go opacity since both the keys are the same we can have it like this with framer motion and now you see it is a little faded at the end but once you start animating it completely goes into the viewport it is visible so yeah so that was the Google Gemini effect that you see here. I've covered the basics of it. I hope you learned something from this video. If you like the video, do like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to bring in more frame of motion or motion tutorials coming forward. I'll be talking a lot about animations and design and front end in general. And if you like this video, do share it with your friends and help grow this channel. Thank you so much and have a good one. Chakalo, chakalo. Chakalo, chakalo.